Good morning, everyone. Matthew with Be Different. It's Monday. Um, running on like uh, six hours of sleep, so we'll see how today goes. Got a lot to do today. Um, my daughter's starting school, so that's, that's a big thing, going in first grade. So pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. Um, anyway, today, I, over, over the weekend, we had some things come up where we're... We're desperately wanting to be honest. We're desperately wanting to do the right thing in God's eyes. And if I would have responded with my knee-jerk reaction, it probably wouldn't have been the best way to attack it. And so I waited. And the tough part about waiting, about responding to these things, was that I felt like I was taking forever, that it was taking its time. But in reality, I was getting, God was giving me a perspective on how to approach it. And after talking it over with my wife, um, we determined the best best route to go. And so we will, uh, with God's help, we'll see if that's the right decision to make. Um, however, um, today in Matthew 10, 39, it says, To find your life, you must lose your life. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. And this is this is kind of where Jesus is calling his disciples to a you know a radical type um, of approach and saying that hey listen if you're going to follow me you need to die to yourself if you're going to um, do what I ask you to do you can't live for yourself anymore you have to lose your life supposedly your old life and follow me and that's kind of how we do Christianity is that when we accept Christ and we are forgiven of our sins, the old man is stripped away. We have to now focus our things on on God and what he's asking us to do. And a lot of times for men, as I've mentioned before, that can be difficult because we're unsure of how to approach it. We're unsure of what to do. And that can be discouraging. And all God is asking us to do is to lay down our lives and say, God, Order my steps. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to clean up my life. I'm going to do what you asked me to do. And I'm just going to follow you. And as you stay in his word, which is this guy right here, his Bible, and as you pray to him every day, he will give you insight. And um, we need to start every day like that and with a purpose knowing that God is going to order our steps. And when you do that, your day is so much better. Your day is so... It goes, it goes so much better, even though it could be the same day. Your mindset is, is of God and not of things that are, are on your plate. And so check this out. I was reading my, um, reading my devotional today. And this prayer, this confession is so cool. So I just want to read it to you guys. Um, I confess that I will not hold back on the Lord any longer. Whatever He wants me to do, that is what I will do. In the past, fear of an uncertain future has hindered me, but now I know that God has only a wonderful adventure in store for me and my family. I rebuke the spirit of fear that has restrained me, and I put my trust fully in the Lord as I step forward by faith to kiss the ground of God's calling in my life. I declare that God will put a deep-seated love in my heart for what He has called me to do. I'll never look back and regret, but will only rejoice that I finally and fully surrendered to the call with which you have entrusted to me. I declare this by faith in Jesus' name. That is so powerful right there. I'm going to have to write that down um, separately outside of the devotional. And it's just so cool that we're confessing with our mouth and saying, you know, devil, you have no place anymore. I am focusing on what God has for my future. And again, a lot of times for men... Um, Focusing on your future is is difficult because you want to know how to approach it. You want to know how much money you're going to make, how many clients you're going to have, how many, you know, how do I navigate the waters? Um, and I think for men it's more of a financial stress because they see themselves as the leader of the house, and if they can't provide for their family, they feel like failures. And <clears throat> a lot of that is true. I felt the same way before, and feeling like I'm a failure to my family. And God has told me, no, that's not true, that you are a leader because you seek me first. And as I seek God, as I draw closer to Him, as I pray to Him and spend time with Him, He heals those those kinds of, of hurts and thoughts. And, and I know that through His Word that I am the spiritual leader of my house. 
And that's what God has commanded me to be. And I will continue to do that until I die. And we need to confess with our mouth that God knows our future. There's nothing that can hinder us. All the fear is gone. And that's the primary driver here is fear. The fear of the unknown. The fear of not being able to provide. The fear of losing our relationships. The fear of not being enough. And that can haunt you. It has me before. Um, so I would encourage you guys today to not let the fear of the devil come in and start talking to you, saying you're not good enough, saying you can't provide, there won't be enough food, there won't be, you won't have a house anymore, you know. Those kinds of fears can settle in and, man, they just wreck you. Uh, your your thought process becomes your reality. And again, it's Romans 12, 2. You know, tra- letting God transform the way you think because in here is where the devil attacks. In this, in this head of ours is where the devil attacks. And I would just encourage you guys today to stay focused on God, not let fear run your life or rule your life for that matter. Um, so anyway, happy Monday, guys. Um, let's make this week a good one. A positive one, one without fear. Be different today, guys. I love you.